Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about the Beretta APX A1. And let me tell you, Beretta has done so many upgrades to this particular pistol that it could be its own pistol outright. It doesn't even need the APX moniker. And that's one of the things that I love about this new version of the APX. We're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison with the original APX, which I have both of them, and we'll be able to do a side-by-side -side for you guys so you can see all of the really cool upgrades that Beretta has done to this particular pistol. With that being said, this video's sponsor is going to be Ballistic Inc. That is my merch store. So if you guys are interested in swinging on by and looking at all the different uh, t-shirts and hats that I have, I'll have a link in the pinned comment down below. It's a great way to support the channel. Along with a lot of other influencers as well. There's a number of different YouTubers that has merch over there, not only on top of Ballistic Inc.'s really cool shirts as well. So I'd encourage you guys to swing on by and check that out. You can choose between these types of hats or the AK bolt face, the spam can, or the fit and fire grenade. Uh, those are my three designs that I really, really do like and hope you guys will uh, enjoy them too. With that being said, let's get into the video real quick. Uh, let me tell you, like I said, this particular pistol has surprised me time and time again, not only from the original APX, but also with now the A1. If you guys are not familiar with this, this is Beretta's polymer frame striker fired pistol that they did submit into the M17 MHS program. Now we all know that the P320 is the pistol that was chosen by the army for right or wrong that's what they decided to do but uh this was actually a really good submission i would say well not this particular one it was actually the original apx but i do want to make sure that you guys have a good understanding that realistically these two pistols are really the same type of pistol internally they've just done some really great updates with the a1 that is going to make it a little bit more I would say kind of modernized and a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So let's dive into all of the different updates with it. Now, first and foremost, we got to talk about the slide. The original slide was one that I didn't think I was going to like, but after time, I've actually become to really enjoy the look of the original slide because you have these kind of reverse slide serrations. And I actually have come to like those because one, they're extremely functional. And two, looking at this pistol, you know it's a Beretta APX. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You look at this and you know that it is a Beretta APX through and through. But that was one of the great things that Beretta did was they really listened to a lot of their consumers and not only their criticisms and their uh, concerns, and they took those to heart and have changed a lot of the uh, aspects of the slide. First and foremost, they went away from that reverse slide serration and have put kind of conventional slide serrations. These are pretty aggressive and you've got some up front for your front press checks and from behind for your slingshotters. Uh, these are pretty aggressive and they uh, feel pretty good when you are racking this slide. So that's something I really, really do like. The next thing is that they switched out the sights. The rear sight is a little shorter and has a little bit more of a ledge for you to do one-handed manipulations should you need to do that. It's a great way to understand how to work your firearm with one hand, whether you're holding your loved one or got a bag or whatever the case may be. Learning how to manipulate your pistol one-handed, it's a great training exercise. But with that being said, they redesigned the rear sights and they make it a little bit shorter, which is great. And they did something that I really, really do appreciate Breda doing. They went away from the three dot sight and put a tritium filled 
high-vis front sight with a blacked out rear and that is exactly how I want my sights to come from the manufacturer each and every single time. Just draw, find that high-vis front sight, put it into the notch in the rear and pull the trigger. That's how I like to do things, not only for my concealed carry pistols, but also from a IEPA two-gun kind of standpoint as well. So good on Beretta for doing that. And then the cherry on top is the fact that they have made this optics ready. So you know, if you've watched my videos, I want my modern pistols to be optics ready. Especially if it's something that I'm going to be concealed carrying, I wanna make sure that this pistol has the ability to accept an optic. Is that the perfect way to do things? No, a lot of people would say just buy the regular and then have it milled, but realistically, uh, with as many pistols as I'm reviewing on a weekly, monthly basis, milling a slide is just not financially responsible. <laughs> I'd rather spend that on ammo to be able to talk about the great things that are going on with some of these pistols. So there is that aspect of it. And that kind of wraps up the slide here. I really do like the fact that they have gone through and kind of redesigned a lot of the different aspects of this particular side to kind of modernize it a little bit and then also listen to the customers and get rid of the external slide serrations and do the internal slide serrations as well. So there is that. All right, moving down to the frame. Uh, grip angle on this is going to be very similar to that of the original. So you're really not getting anything different when it comes to the grip angle. But one of the great aspects that Beretta went through and revised is the grip texture. They've actually added more grip texture, especially here where your thumb would naturally rest if you're shooting one-handed, but it also gives you a little bit more texture for your support hand as well to kind of help get in and get a good grip on that pistol and help mitigate recoil. The magazine release on this is going to be exactly the same, so no concerns there. And then one of the other great things that they did was they got rid of all of the finger grooves here and have a flat-faced front to the pistol, great, pistol grip, uh, which is really, really nice. Added that really great uh, texture from the back or the uh, back of the grip here to the front and it really feels good in the hand. Very aggressive, but not over aggressive to the point where it's uncomfortable to hold and or shoot. So that's something else that I really, really do like. The magazines on this is going to be reverse compatible to the original, which is great. So 17 round magazine there. And the other great thing that they did was they added a little bit more of a undercut here on the trigger guard to give you a opportunity to get a higher grip on this pistol. So uh, that is another great aspect to this pistol. It helps me align these sights each and every single time I pull this pistol up to draw. Now, with all of that being said, the great awesome thing about this is the fact that the original APX was hovering in right around that $350 mark. Well, Beretta is still doing an awesome job of creating a really nice polymer frame striker fired pistol and still coming under $500. I was able to pick this one up for about $475 to include the SIG Foxtrot 1X Lite. And not only are you getting a really nice polymer frame striker fired pistol from one of the oldest manufacturers and it's not going to break the budget. And that's something I really, really do like about this. All right, so let's talk about the trigger on this. Uh, this is going to be pretty much what you would expect from the original APX. Uh, so not too much different, maybe just a little cleaner. Uh, but here is your take up here and your brake. Ever so slight creep on it, but it's hardly noticeable. Here's your reset. A little sluggish on the reset, but audible, tactile, and then your brake again. There you go. Just ever so slight on that creep, but I can't complain one bit. It's no worse than a stock Glock or Smith & Wesson m and 9 trigger. So um, this has been a pleasant surprise for the price point that you're getting this at. So 
really have enjoyed this pistol a lot. Now let's talk about some of the downsides because you know that I like to talk about the good with the bad and the first thing that I need to talk about is going to be the size of this pistol. While this is going to be very similar to like a Glock 19 so you got your 17 round or kind of your normal capacity magazine with a four inch barrel. Uh, very similar to that, it's still going to be kind of beefy. So concealed carrying this might be a little bit of a challenge for some people. Not all, but some people. For me, in particular, um, yeah, this might be a little bit more difficult for me to conceal carry in the warmer months. Fall, winter, shouldn't be a problem. I'm wearing a hoodie, so no problem there. The next thing is trying to find a holster specifically for this particular setup might be a little challenging. Not to say that there isn't holsters out there, there are, but um, realistically, trying to find a holster th that would fit this SIG Foxtrot 1X light with the APX might be uh, a little bit um, more challenging than say your Glocks or your Smith & Wessons or stuff like that. So there's another aspect of it as well, just so you guys are aware of it. I am pretty sure that the uh, original APX and this A1 APX are going to be reverse compatible on uh, holsters as well, but unfortunately uh, I don't have a holster to uh, verify that for you guys as of yet. Since this is just the first looks video, I will try to get a um, holster for you guys and uh, let you guys know how that works out. The next thing that I like to point out uh, with this is, as you can see, even though this is optics ready, there's not an optic on here. And the reason for that is because you have to purchase the optics plate from Beretta. And that's different from the Beretta 92X RDO. Uh, you actually get an optics plate from Beretta. You just have to wait a couple of days after you register it with Beretta. They will uh, send you a basically a coupon code for you to get a free plate for your 92X RDO. Unfortunately, with the APXA1, you don't get the same thing. You get a 10% discount for the $50 plate that they're going to charge you uh, to mount an optic on here. And that really kind of rubs me the wrong way. I do understand that this is a budget gun and by not providing a optics plate that kind of helps keep that cost down to the consumer. I do understand that, but $50 for a plate, it's, that's a jagged little pill to swallow there. So uh, I would love to see Beretta kind of rethink that strategy and either offer a plate with the uh, pistol itself or offer a coupon code that would uh, give you a free plate uh, once you purchase and register this with Beretta. Outside of that, this has been a great pistol, really fun to shoot. Again, uh, continues to surprise me each and every single time that I pick this pistol up and take it to the range. Uh, again, this is only my first looks, gotten it out to the range on two different occasions and uh, only have about 200 rounds through it. So uh, still trying to get it through its paces. I'll come back and give you guys an update after I got a few more hundred rounds or a thousand rounds through this and we will close out the uh, Beretta APX A1 at a future point. So, but my question to you guys is, what do you guys think about the Beretta APX series? Is it one of those pistols that continues to surprise you as it does with me? Or is it just another polymer frame striker fire pistol in the sea of other polymer frame striker fire pistols like Glock, Smith & Wesson, H&K, uh, the list goes on and on and on. I really do like it. I think it kind of sets itself apart from all of the other entries into the M17 MHS program, but I'll leave it to you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment section down below. I would love to get your guys' um, thoughts, opinions, whatever else. Thank you guys for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. Again, swing on by Ballistic Inc. and check out all of the merch that we have over there for you guys to help support the channel. I would really, really appreciate that. And we will catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Take care, guys. Bye.